Good evening and thanks for joining us. Tonight we have more details on the Marine accused of stabbing his ex-wife to death last week on the H3 freeway. His former in-laws flew into town over the weekend to get answers about this horrific murder. KITV Forest Kristen Concilio joins us live tonight after speaking with the victim's mother and eldest sister who arrived in the islands this weekend. Kristen. Well, Mika Natalia Sapita says she wants justice for her daughter who was pregnant and to prevent this from happening to other families. The mother of Dana Alotaibi, the woman brutally killed last week, describes her former son-in-law, Bryant Tejeda Castillo, as a troubled man who lacked empathy. Natalia Sapita says she barely knew her son-in-law, but Tejeda Castillo twice told her he needed help with his mental health. And on one visit to Hawaii a year ago, as she was leaving to return home to the mainland, she knew something was wrong. We cry a lot, and I will leave to my daughter again, so we cry. And he told me, why you cry? I never cry. I don't feel nothing, nothing. I remember that word. I said, how? How he don't feel nothing? Probably because I give a love to all my family. I give a lot of love and they give it to me. Probably this guy don't receive love when he grow. I don't know. Sapita says the couple was married for almost three years and had a rocky relationship for most of it. We can believe it. We're... Sometimes I think we're still in denial because we didn't see my sister's body. We all are broken. We all are trying our best to see my sister, bring her back home. She was planning to go back home. Marine Corps Base Hawaii told KITV military police and the Honolulu Police Department responded to multiple domestic disputes, both on and off base, and that the couple were referred to counseling and support services. The Marine Corps also issued a no-contact order banning Tejeda Castillo from contacting his estranged wife. But in March, the Marine was disciplined for violating the no-contact order and for making a non-violent threat to Alotaibi. Basically, my husband threatened to kill me. Alotaibi said in a YouTube video that she was waiting to separate assets so she could move back home to the East Coast and that the military had promised to help her move her things. But when her daughter cried out for help multiple times, Sapita and, says um, no one listened. Now she's dead because nobody want to hear. This will continue to happen if we don't stop. You know, it's a lot of pain, a lot of pain, maybe a lot of families destroyed. I will not see my grandbaby anymore, my first baby. I will not. Uh, I the family's hoping to soon bring Alotaibi's body back home to Virginia. Kristen Concilio, KITV4 Island News.